As I've traveled around the world, I have met some incredible people, all unique, and each one I've found has a story. We all have stories. And I've also found that every time we have dark moments in our lives, no matter what they may be, we'll always find a hope revealed. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Hi, I'm Judy Bauer, and it's exciting to be on this uh, podcast with Brother Matt. We've just really connected over this past year in such a great way. Been in the ministry for over 40 years and been married for almost 54 years. Oh, my goodness. So that's like my proudest achievement right there. And I have two adult children, and I still travel the world ministering. It's just been really awesome. And I'm so appreciative, Brother Matt, for you having me on your podcast today. Hey everybody, this is Matt back with another episode of Hope Revealed, and I'm super excited to be here today with a great friend. Her name is Judy, as you have met her a bit, a bit on the front side of this uh, podcast. She is such an amazing, amazing woman. Hard to believe that um, she's been married for, what, five years now? Uh, more like uh, 10 50, times. <laughs> and 54. Can't believe 54, it's 54 years. Coming year. up on 54. How Woo. can you be married for 54 years when you're 29 years old? I have no I idea. I know, right? It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> People say there's no miracles today, but I'm telling you what. Oh, I can attest to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, you have... You have been able to do so many things in this world, around the world, for so many years, and uh, we probably have to have a thousand shows just to go through all of it. Ooh, uh, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Oh, man, that'd be great. It'd be awesome. Uh, just to break all those stories down, you've been a, a missionary, yes. um, you've been a, a minister, you've been pastoring, you've been yep. uh, you've reaching people around the world for such a long time. And uh, you've had, of course, your ups and downs through the years, you know, through all that thing. But uh, I guess one of, the, one of the biggest things you're doing on a consistent basis right now is your, is your podcast, your show, Epic Conquerors, right? Yeah, we just love doing that. Every Monday and Friday, we have episodes on Epic Conquerors. And Epic stands for Everything's Possible in Christ. Awesome. And so that's what's so powerful to me about that. Yeah. So tell me, tell me a little bit more about the show. I mean, what, um, what's the whole premise of it and how do you... How do you find people for the show and what we try to, is it, it theme based? I know when I came on the show one time, you had a theme for a period of time and I, I was part of that theme. So yeah, that we did do different series. Yeah, we've done different series, but mostly the concept is because we're more than conquerors through Christ. So it's overcoming stories, you know, and how do you overcome this and how do you overcome that? Because there's so many facets to our life as Christians. I mean, God is multifaceted and he created us in his image, and we also are very multifaceted. So that yeah. means we have a lot of areas to discover how to be overcomers. And sometimes yeah, we do anybody, better. Anybody, yeah, whether you're or not, it's, just a, it's a life thing, right? Yeah, and sometimes we do better in one area than another, you know. And so uh, there's so many different topics to talk about to be epic in and realize yeah. that we have the victory no matter what it looks like mm. because Christ in us is the victor. So we've got the champion on the inside. <laughs> yeah, we do. And you, you have, you're definitely an example of that. I mean, I could just see it. Folks just look at her face. I mean, <laughs> see, see, you can see love in that face right there. And, and uh, uh, I really, I do love this lady. And uh, well, I mean, you've got quite a few stories. So, I mean, when it comes down to, uh, I love mission work. I love going around the world, doing things. I have a heart for people that are, I've got yes. things that I'm, I'm responsible for in Africa and, Yes. Uh, I hope that I have uh, capacity to do more later. Um, if you'd like to make a donation. I believe that. <laughs> Fantastic. We can do more work. But in the meantime, you've done some amazing things. So, all right, just think back on your missionary work. What is the most interesting and or dangerous moment you ever had when you were in the mission field? We didn't even talk about this prior, so I'm throwing you a really fast curveball here. But can you think of a moment that was like, oh, my gosh. Well, there's quite a few, actually, because oh I've, been, I've really been in some difficult, dangerous places, uh, which is quite unique. Being a woman, and I travel by myself predominantly, hmm. although there are some times that I've taken people with me. If your dad but, were still here, he'd probably say, no, Judy, you're not going there. <laughs> no, my dad, he, he would have rooted for me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. He would have said, you go, girl. <laughs> His story is quite amazing and phenomenal, but... Anyway, we were in Egypt and we were not supposed to be there because it was a time of great persecution for Christians. 
And so we, there were soldiers out there with machine guns in front of every church kind of place. So we had to go underground to get wherever we wanted to go to have our meetings and so on and so forth. And the gentleman that brought me into Egypt, we actually ended up doing the training in a basement of an orphanage so that no one would discover that we were there. And then he didn't tell the officials that I had come into the country until the day that I left the country. Wow. So it was a little bit cloak and daggerish, and it was kind of fun to be in all that excitement. <laughs> yeah, I bet you. And uh, you got to do the whole course at the same time, yeah? Yeah, I did. It was really, really great. We had just so many precious Egyptian pastors there and their wives, and it was a wonderful experience. They were so blessed you know, that I would come and be able to spend time. I wonder with them. That, what, how long ago was that? What year was that? I was probably in the late eighties. In the eighties. Do yeah. you have any contact with any of those people still today? Yes. In fact, one of the gentlemen that I met during that time, I actually ended up sponsoring them to come to America later. And he now lives about an hour and a half from me. So I just saw them recently and, yeah. uh, they're just doing amazing. Uh, it's just been a wonderful thing. So they are spreading the gospel throughout Egypt in, in one of the largest kind of ways that it could be done, especially during these years where they're not allowing so much to happen there. He's got the only Christian newspaper, but he's able to do it from here too, to spread it out. Right. And so like on, on the internet, well, but real handheld newspapers. And yeah, so they go later. from person to person, right? And the word gets spread, and they have brought so many people to Christ. It's amazing. Wow. A lot of people don't understand that that goes on in the world. They, a lot of folks that are here in the you know, westernized culture. That's right. We don't America realize. Or UK, yeah. Australia, whatever. Uh, you wouldn't even think about it. Don't even imagine That's it. That's right. You, you have freedom to do whatever you want, basically. Uh, yeah. Uh, even and Germany, to think how Germany. precious a newspaper would be. And it can be their most valuable treasure. Yeah. And to pass that around cloak and dagger-ish as well, you yeah. know, so it will be able to continue on. It's amazing thing how much people are, are um, willing to sacrifice to find out information that can change their lives. Yes, that's, that's true. Um, well, they want hope, like your podcast is Hope Revealed. That's what they're looking for, yeah. is to have hope revealed. And through that newspaper and the different things that we do, have done there, hope is getting revealed to a lot of people. So it's really powerful. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's so important for us in life. Um, you know, this show goes out to so many people that are uh, of different faiths that uh, yes. are on my LinkedIn uh, network. And, um, you know, whether you're a Christian or not, um, there's, there's so much that we have to go through. And persecution yes. is not foreign to, to anyone, I would say. I think that's right. I understand it. Life and, happens to everybody. <laughs> it does. And it's yeah. so important to understand how, how that hope, uh, how you can tap into it. And um, there's a lot of different ways. Yes, I think there are some ways on this planet we can have hope um, that doesn't necessarily come from, from a religion. But I do, think that, I do think that God works through people or different things in so many ways that because he is love, because he is hope, he provides things for us so we can get through it, whether we, whether we know him or not. Well, he I'll says we great. entertain no. angels unaware, you know, so he does have people and angels that are out and about that are helping us, encouraging us and assisting us when we don't even realize it, whether we know God or not, you know, God still loves people. That's why he yeah. sent his son, Jesus Christ, right? He sends angels like this over here. That's it. <laughs> there she is That's right it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he's, a, he's an angel for sure. That's right. Well, Judy, obviously uh, the name of the show is Hope Revealed, and, and you have been uh, an incredible person here on this planet, which is so cool. But there was, oh, there was a time in your life where, where some things were pretty difficult for you. And uh, even though you've been married for 54 years, which is absolutely amazing, yes, uh, there was a, a time in your, in your life and your marriage where things looked, looked pretty bad, right? Yeah, um, yeah. you mind sharing a little bit about that dark moment in sure. your life? It was really a, a difficult season. You know, life has full of seasons, right? We have winter, summer, spring, and fall in all kinds of ways in our lives, not just in the weather. But in this particular season, we were both pastoring. We pioneered and pastored a church, and it was just doing fantastic. And then we had this massive church split. 
And uh, to anyone that's in the ministry or in leadership, when you have a big breakup like that, uh, psychologically, they say, for everyone that leaves in a situation like that, it's a divorce to you. So like for us, it was like we had 150 divorces happen simultaneously, and that's pretty traumatic. Yeah. Just going through one divorce can knock some people's world. 150 so, at one time. Yeah. So that's pretty massive. But fortunately, I was raised in a healthy Christian environment, so I had a strong foundation under me. But my husband, I led him to the Lord when we were dating, actually. Oh, you and did do some missionary yes, dating with him, didn't yes, you? Yes, I did. Judy, yes. Judy, Judy, I'm not going to let my know. daughter listen to this, this podcast. Okay. Well, <laughs> hope revealed. <laughs> it, well, I knew we couldn't get married unless he was a Christian. So yeah, um, you made that happen. I, I, you know, we were at a place when we were dating where it was like, I knew in my heart, if he didn't come to Christ, then we couldn't carry forward because whatever. And so this one particular evening, it just was a make it or break it moment where we were either going to move forward as a couple or not. And so I shared with him about how you find faith in Christ and he received the Lord and cried and it was so touching. Yeah. And so anyway, that's a blessing right there. But he was raised in a very alcoholic dysfunctional family environment. So his underpinning to handle drama and trauma and all that hatred that comes when people are mad at you, they loved you one day, the next day they hate you for whatever reason. Yeah. And so he just totally had a breakdown, massive breakdown. He was laying on the bed, willing himself to die. Uh, I didn't quite know how to deal with all of that. Um, because I was also taking care of the church at the time and we had two teenage children at the time. And so there was a lot on my plate also to manage yeah. all of this triage it. And uh, watching him lay there on the bed, he was just sinking away. The depression was so severe and the pain was so severe. And so I was trying to get him into a psych hospital so that somebody could help him uh, come out of this funk and so I'm making call after call and everybody just turned us down. We didn't have the right insurance. We didn't have this or whatever the situation. And I was in such a place where it was like, it's now or never, this man needs help. And I went out into the living room and I just screamed, Matt, at the top of my lungs. I just said, no, just everything in my guts, just in that one word. And wow. instantly. God spoke and he said, Judy, don't despair. Talk about hope revealed. Those three words just immediately turned my whole situation around inwardly. Wow. And hope was so huge at that split second. It was just a phenomenal thing. I'll never, ever, ever forget it. Went back into the kitchen, dialed the next hospital. They said, bring him in right now. And that ended up being the most amazing experience for him. He stayed there for, for three weeks. And during that three weeks, he was such a sponge to learn how to do life different. They ended up hiring him at the hospital and he served there for a couple of years as chaplain That's in the hospital, getting so much experience of people from all walks of life, all types of financial stratosphere, you know, from the poorest of the poor to the richest of the rich that would come there for help. And then they ended up closing that hospital or he might still have been working there. Wow. But it was like the best experience God could have ever given us. So in our most horrendous, hopeless time, just those three words, Judy, don't despair. And so I would just say that to our audience today. If you're in a situation, don't despair because God's got you, like Brother Matt always says. And he's got a plan and he's got a way of escape and he's going to help you move forward in that. Just look to him. And so as a result now, he's been able to counsel and help tons of people and pastors and so on. And so we've just been so thankful that we actually went through that dark time wow. because it ended up being such a blessing to our own lives, made us have a healthier marriage as well because he'd learned different skills for handling life. And uh, we were able to help so many out of that. So that was really a really. So he was able to get some, I mean, moment. obviously there was some counseling there, but it was a really a, a, mind, a mindset yeah. issue there as well. Mindset's a big yes. deal. Everybody talks about it. Yes. Days. Yes. Emotional intelligence. Another, another topic people talk right. about. 
Um, so this was a moment where he was able to, uh, well, I call, you know, my program's called The Flip. So he was able to flip the script on life. Yes. He was able to, to flip who he was to where he's at. Yes. He didn't abandon everything about himself, but he was able no. to, to put those two things together. Well, so he, he knew his upbringing was very difficult and painful and not a healthy one. So he wanted to learn how to do it different. And I think that's an important component for any of us in life is being willing to do it different because our want to has to want to. <laughs> if our want to doesn't want to, we ain't doing it. <laughs> so you have to have that teachability, that humility to be willing to change whatever that means, whatever it looks like. And his want to wanted to so bad because he knew he needed help. He just didn't know how to get from step A to step B and being encased in that psych hospital for those three weeks just turned his whole self inside out basically into a whole different way of thinking and perceiving life and how old were you kids back then you said teenagers oh no we were probably around 40 40 years old when that happened yeah so it's been quite a while now but anyway because we're both in our 70s oh my goodness (laughs) you can't be be in your 70s yeah yeah heading heading into the middle one oh my gosh (laughs) like oh dear I cut you off you got to say one of these things you were getting ready to say uh yeah he married a child bright no we're only a year apart so anyway (laughs) but it, it was such a blessing to us and I just really appreciate how that God has people in places that can help you and we just have to be willing to receive that help right yeah because physician heal yourself you can't and I think so many times we try to be our own physician and to take matters into our own hands because by golly you know we got this and we need to know that God's got this but he's going to use other people to help us in that journey I always think of that story of Lazarus where when he died and Jesus went to raise him from the dead. And so he called him and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And so when Lazarus came up out of the tomb, he was still wrapped in grape clothes. And here's the important thing that just stood out to me one day that just kind of revolutionized my thought in this area too. He said to the people nearby, he said, loose him and let him go. And so sometimes the things that are holding us in a death grip, if you will, because Lazarus was alive. Jesus had just raised him from the dead, but he was still bound up in grape clothes. Yeah. So when the others around him loosed him and unwrapped him, then he was able to walk free. And sometimes we also need to allow other people to unwrap us and to help loosen off those grape clothes, those dead things that we've gotten attached to <laughs> through yeah. whatever. Or allow them to stay had. attached to us. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's a powerful. great story. It's a, it, well, it's a fantastic uh, revelation, fantastic opportunity to learn some things, especially about those things that are wrapped around us in our lives. And yep. Uh, the yeah, cool we thing can't is that, that, see. Yeah, we can't see. You no. know, that's the problem. And so we have to let others that are looking out from a different perspective help us unwrap some of those things that are holding us in bondage. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so much. That's a good. That's a good part there. No doubt. Talk about a hope revealed. <laughs> Could you imagine being Lazarus and like, what stinks? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we can get this off of me. It's the grave clothes, baby. Yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. okay, but it's the grave clothes. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he wanted those things off just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, but he, if you're in const in it, you can't unwrap yourself, right? Yeah, you're stuck. Somebody else has to do it. You have to get help. You have to get help. That's the whole point. And um, fortunately, he had people that loved him and and were willing to help him and get him out of that mess. You know? Yeah. Such a good thing. But it takes people. And that's where I think I appreciate your friendship, too, in this past year. And and others is when we build relationships with one another, then we're there to help each other unwrap areas of our lives. And that's such a blessing. Talk about hope revealed. Yeah. That's... That's the most powerful thing. So your husband was, uh, he transitioned from three weeks in the psych ward. And then within a short matter of time, I would assume. Yeah. He was yeah. Within just a few weeks. Yeah. He was working there full time as well as we, <laughs> we were. We want pastoring. this crazy guy to be our chaplain. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you're a hungry sponge and you change so dramatically and he got it, I mean, he understood it and he came from such a place. So he was really powerful 
to be able to help people. So when they do their circles of, you know, where they work on each other, mm -hmm. he was so gifted in that. And throughout our marriage, then since that time, there's times I've said to him, honey, work on me. <laughs> Because he has such a gift of being able to ask questions and things that help you unearth the truth that's hidden sometimes within uh, us yeah. that we can't see. And so if somebody asks the right question, then you can, you know, when you respond to that, then all of a sudden the truth comes out into the light and you can see it for the first time and then you can yeah. deal with it. Oh, uh, and I, I love the, I love to be able to do that too. I'm blessed to have that kind of life. I don't think I'm nearly as good as your husband, but I'm very, very grateful to have the opportunity to, to see the lights come on for folks sometimes. Yes. You're very good at that oh, as well. But thank you. But I think it's just amazing to see what it means for the other person, you know? And like you said, with that, whoever the staff member was, I'm sure you probably know, but whoever the staff members were back then that really spoke into his life. I mean, they're really, they're really part of all the amazing breakthroughs that's happened through him that's over right. the years. That's if, right. If they would have said no to what they were doing, it's quite possible your husband wouldn't even be here. That's right. Not to mention yeah. all the things he was able to do. So how important is yeah. it? To, so that, and, and here's the thing. Most people don't even know what those people's names are. That's right. right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like even the business that I'm in here with coaching, consulting, whatnot. It's like, you know, I, I can help thousands of people. But then people are like, Matt, who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, the, the breakthrough happened in thousands of people, and it just goes and goes and goes. So, That's I mean, right. You know. Sometimes we're God's of, best kept secret, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, have to be willing to, you have to be willing to step back. And, That's and, right. Uh, I wasn't always willing. I tell you, it's a, it's a wrestling match sometimes with me still. And I, I, I have to get over pride sometimes. Okay, I have to get over pride a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But, Let's all uh, be real. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, we want credit for what we do when it's good. You know, to, sure. No, everybody, of everybody wants that. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody's like, oh, I don't care, liar. You know. That's somebody, right. That's right. Gave you some kudos right now. You'd like it, but that's right. You have to learn how to. Um, you know, the Bible teaches that we're we're supposed to give God all the glory, right? I mean, He's responsible yes. for everything. So He's the only one that can handle all the accolades. <laughs> So how do you do that? Head. So part of that giving that to him is, is by stepping back, you know, Doesn't that's to, right. It's not always about, about me or about you, about whoever it's about who we're, who we're trying to help, you know, that's right. So what an amazing gift. Um, and to know that it was such a blessing into your marriage. It, uh, blessed my heart for you to say that you asked your husband to work on me and you're, you're kidding around, but, um, uh, not kidding around no, for real. There's, well, yeah, but think about yeah. this. There's, there's a lot of marriages where, where that quest, that statement wouldn't be made at the house. Oh, yeah. well, husband wouldn't say that to each other. They might love each other, but not to have that kind of abandonment and, and vulnerability trust. and trust to, to the other, yeah. and trust yeah, to the other person to say, blah, and then, and then not expect that they're going to give you some negative self-seeking response. You just saying, Please. yeah. And uh, what a breakthrough and a miracle it is for you and your marriage to have that. Yes, that's it really was. Really, uh, I can only imagine I've not been married as long as you have guys, but I've been may be 31 years for us. Woohoo! We'll celebrate that. We got married when we were sure. three. But, uh, oh uh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were just talking I'm, about lying a moment ago, right? I know. I know. And I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to work on being a good husband. Uh, I've been trying to do a lot of things for a lot of years and I've made a lot of mistakes, but uh, I always listen for, for things that could be helpful for me as a husband. And that was really a great, a great moment there to think about how I could be a guy that w my wife would ask that kind of a question to. Mm. So for yeah. those that are watching, I mean, what about you guys over there, the guys that are married? Um, are you the type of person that your wife could ask you that question? Yeah. It's a big deal. And it requires yeah. a bit of work on, on the part of the person. And the, if the roles reverse wife to husband, husband to wife, Whoever it is. Yeah, but you know, wives don't wait for their husband to say, would you work on me? We just do it. We just tell them like it is. That's right. This is the way it is. If mama ain't happy. Yeah. And guys, though, they're afraid to tread on those waters if they don't have permission kind of a thing. Oh, my so Lord. I do not have wanna, to. I don't want to release the. I don't want to release the, 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 the trite and whatever it is. <laughs> right. So that's why we have to give them permission to come in and, and talk with us and be at a moment where we're not going to get defensive either, but just allow them to use the gift that God gave them. You know, God gives us all different kinds of gifts. 
and the gift that you need at the moment that's the most important gift right it's like somebody says oh but i have this gift and i have that gift well that gift doesn't do me any good if that's not what i need right now yeah so the best gift is the one that's needed at the moment and that's where i love the multifacetedness of god because he functions in and through us in that same way and if we will tune into what he's doing he will allow us to be whatever somebody needs us to be Mm. and and that's really an amazing um how do you process. tap into that judy how do you tap into that moment how do you find that place well for me romans fifteen twenty nine is such a powerful verse it says and i am sure that when i come unto you i shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of christ so in other words i'm coming from a position and i usually pray that scripture right before i'm talking to someone or if i'm in the middle of talking to them and i sense there's a need there then i just inwardly go okay lord i'm coming in the fullness of the gospel of the blessing of christ give me the word in season that they need right now and then that way you just tap into whatever it is the spirit of god wants to say in and through you and it's a it's a powerful miraculous hope revealed moment when you're operating in that way because you realize it's not of your own wisdom but god is speaking to you whatever that individual needs at the time mm. yeah it's so good so you know it's one of those things be all things to all people people say that sometimes but uh it, it is quite possible you know there's when we talk about spiritual gifts of that nature there's five yeah. five gifts that i've that i've read about mm -hmm. and um you know uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that might not know what those are, but, and there's pastor, teacher, apostle, prophet, and pastor, teacher, apostle, prophet. What am I missing? Pastor. Evangelist. Evangelist. All right. So, yes. I'm, and I'm an evangelist. That's weird. I yeah. that <laughs> so, uh, such a humble dude. There. <laughs> yeah. So crazy, right? So, for me, apostle, I look at apostle as uh, apostle is a person that flies at 50,000 feet. Apostle is somebody who has caught visions and ideas and has all these kinds of ways to be, a, be able to take territory and know where to go with it and then pass those ideas to people so they can do that. But then they're saying, great, you got it. I'm off to the next big idea. So apostles are like an, an entrepreneurial spirit. It's an entrepreneurial spirit, right? So then you got, uh, I'm an gonna, I'm gonna evangelist. Saying my two top uh, gifts are apostle and evangelist. So, which is funny, I fly at 50,000 feet and I'm screaming about it. So <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so to be able to land that ship, it takes work when you are that type of person. So you get apostle evangelist, somebody who likes to speak it out and, uh, and proclaim pastor, pastor, pastor. Uh, so pastor is somebody who likes to take care of people, take care of situations. Uh, of course, that's pastor of church. It could be, uh, it could be uh, leaders in communities. It could be a uh, CEO. It could be a management situation. There's all ways that, that you pastor in life with people. So apostle evangelist, pastor, teacher obviously somebody that you're actually trying to teach everybody gets teaching uh, so you're you're actually able to share some things with people and they they get it i mean that's when you're a good teacher yeah. you actually teach yeah. people something and they can receive it if you're yes. teaching people all the time they don't know what you're talking about maybe you're, yes. not, you're not really supposed to be a teacher all right so and then the uh, last one that prophet where you're actually to pro proclaim right in the, in the scriptures it's somebody who's the mouthpiece of god proclaiming yes. God's word. and in life we prophetically proclaim things to people um now people can take that and, and twist it the opposite way and they can be uh, deceiving liars with that gift. It's very difficult uh, sometimes to know. So that's where uh, understanding things, being able to discern is very important. So anyway, in those gifts right there, my whole point with saying that when you talk about those things is that sometimes if you're like just an evangelist and you're thinking, oh, I can never teach people. I'm not a good teacher. I can't do that thing. There may be a moment in your life when you're going to be with somebody and you're going to be required not to be an evangelist. But at that moment, you're going to have to teach somebody something. Yes. Or and shepherd the them. Pastor that's right. Them. And any of those them. Yeah. For anybody in life. Or speak the truth to them. Proclaim yeah. the truth. Yeah. You, you will be able to. God has a way of empowering us with those things. And, yeah. And uh, you'd be able to function in those, in those roles, you know. And in my life, I've actually transitioned a couple of times where my key uh, gifting, my key uh, spiritual gifts, like I said right now, it's apostle and, and evangelist. And I have a test thing that I do to be able to do that. Like people do Myers-Briggs and whatnot. I've got tested mm -hmm. that does the, the uh, spiritual gift assessment. Right. But there's times where like pastor was number one in my life. Yeah. I never would have thought apostle would have been number one in my life. You know, things, sometimes yeah. they, they move. Things, um, yep. And you have to be willing to move with it. You have to be willing to say, all right, I give up. I'm going to do this. You know, and I'm going to do this instead. And it's like people that want to uh, go from a nine to five job 
and they're miserable. They can't stand it. They don't hate everybody. They just hate what they're doing. It's not their life. And they want to be a business owner, entrepreneur of some sort. And you just have to finally one day say, that's it. I'm going to do it. And you make the decision. You shift from one type of person to another type of person when that happens. Yeah. Uh, but you have to make the decision to do it. So anyway, a little side note for, for explaining what some of that we were talking about. But I do think there's moments in our lives that we have to experience some of those other places. Whether it's yes. comfortable for us or not, we have to be willing to do it. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Well, we want to be what we want to be Jesus in the moment to whomever we're talking to. And he's all that and more. <laughs> yeah. So if we just let him function through us, then he's we'll all that and a bag that. of chips. What we you saying? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Maybe a couple bags. Oh, of chips. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of noise around me. I hope you're not hearing that through the microphone, but they're putting a new roof on our home. Oh, is that what they're doing? <laughs> that's, that's amazing. So all that noise, I hope that's not going to interfere. No, that's okay. That's all right. So Judy, um, kind of here at the last minute, wrapping up, you, you kind of shared some of those moments about time with you and your, your marriage. You had a difficult situation. Um, you really started questioning your life, your life with your husband, whether he was going to live or die. I mean, it was a lot of pressure. And then uh, some folks came in and you, you were able to, to get some help and, and he had a breakthrough in his life. So for that person who may be, at that kind of a moment in their life where it's that overwhelming, oh my God, I don't think I'm going to make this happen. It's not, I don't know what else to do. Um, What would you say to that person right now that's listening or watching? Well, if you're in a situation right now that's very devastating to you and you don't know the answer, it's kind of like almost in a sense that Carrie Underwood song, Jesus Take the Wheel. I mean, you just need to have that moment of surrender where you just give yourself to God fully and just say, God, I I raise the white flag. You know, I surrender. I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. You know, help me. And, you know, God is a loving father. And when one of his kids calls out to him for help, he's right there. And it's just that moment of surrender where we really give up trying to figure it out for ourselves, trying to do it in our own strength that I've discovered that God just really rushes right on in there and says, here, let me show you what's the next step. And, you know, he's just so fantastic. and He's so faithful. Uh, You can count on him. And I think that's the big thing when we're in the midst of a devastating thing. We don't know who can we really trust. And I'm here to say over and over again in my life, over 40 some years traveling the world and being in all kinds of difficult situations, God has never failed me yet, and he'll never fail you either because it's not in his nature. It's mm. not who he is. He will never fail us. That's so good. Well, that's great. He will. He will not ever fail us. And it's a great place to know that we have an opportunity to, uh, to experience what you did when he said, Judy, don't despair. Don't despair. And I think that's the thing where the enemy tries to get us into a place of despair and desperation. And once we can just surrender that and give it to God fully, boom, he's like, good. I was waiting for that. (laughs) Once we gave it to him, now he can get busy with it. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, yeah. And set things in motion. How how if, um, if some folks wanted to to talk to you or, or reach out to you or find you, I mean, how do they do that? Do you have a website or is there a place for folks can find you? How does, how does it happen? Yeah, they can go to Judy Bauer, B-A-U-E-R, JudyBauer.org. Or they can go to epicwinforyou.com. Uh, the four is a number and the U is a letter. So epicwinforyou.com. That's where we do our podcast and we have a lot of other information there as well. So either way. And uh, yeah, that'll be great. Love it. Oh, that's so good. And from what I understand, you, uh, you have recently written and published a book, yes? Oh, don't get me started on that. Uh-oh. <laughs> My- My latest new baby, yeah, it's called Unstoppable, Unlocking Your Fullest Potential. And it's such a revelatory experience that I had with God years ago that whenever I've shared it, people said, would you put that in a book? So I finally did. And it's on Amazon and you can find it under my name or under Unstoppable, Unlocking Your Fullest Potential. Because, you know, it really is important to me that every believer really develop to their fullest capacity to do what God has destined for them to do and to fulfill their God-given purpose. And this book will help you be unstoppable to accomplish those things that Mm. that God has given you to do and that you have desired to do. Yeah. So I'm just thinking about it. If somebody is a 
a non-Christian? Is this something that they can read and relate to? Or oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, scriptural principles are eternal principles, right? They work for the saved and the unsaved in that sense, right? Because they're just eternal things. Like gravity works whether you're saved or not saved, whether you know God or not. If you fall from some high place, you're going to go straight down. <laughs> it's just gravity works. And so there's eternal principles that operate in the same way. So no matter what your thought is, you would be able to glean information from this that would really help you be unstoppable. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, folks, you need to make sure you check that thing out on Amazon. Of course, I've already edited this thing. So you've already seen the book. You've already seen the link. <laughs> uh, we'll have it in the information here too when you're watching awesome. or whether you're listening today. So uh, thank you so much, Judy, for being here. I just absolutely have always loved you, loved your heart, felt like an instant connection with you when we met. Um, golly, it's been over a year, I guess, when we yeah. started. Uh, when did we meet through Pete Vargas's thing? Yeah, I think so. But it's been over a year. Yeah, we yeah. just instantly connected, and it's been really great. It and you so came good. on our podcast, and we loved it. And we need to do another one as well. Yeah, it'll be fun. I've had quite yeah. a few differences here in the past since the last podcast. So yeah, uh, it, it'd be a major uh, update for sure. Yeah, that would well, be fantastic. By the way, she and you've got so many podcasts, and you've got a couple other folks that you have as co-hosts with your show as well. So you've yes. got a lot of different perspectives and thoughts, and and uh, good Lord, all the series that you have. How many podcasts do you think you have in the Epic series? Well, we do two a week, and we've been doing it for a little over a year now. So if you do the math, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Probably 104, <laughs> right? 52, 52 least, a year. Yeah, so probably 120 episodes by now. I just did a series on denial, the myths of denial and uh, how you set the atmosphere for those tough conversations so those would be a great topic yeah that's mm -hmm. a really good one yeah i don't need that <laughs> hey <laughs> i might be in denial <laughs> hey that's not a river in egypt either <laughs> no it's not that's denial oh that's so funny i thought about that when you were saying you beat me to the punch i thought you did i saw the twinkle in your eye yeah. <laughs> judy thanks so much again for being yeah. here at hope revealed today it's been a blast and I, I surely hope that folks will reach out to you as well and and like uh like she mentioned earlier that if you if you are experiencing those dark moments those places where you're just don't know what to do. Maybe sometimes the best thing to do is just let it out. And, and you have no idea what could yes. happen if you just release things. And uh, Judy was able to do that. And her whole life, her husband's life was radically yes. transformed as a result. Yes. It was candy for you. So folks, no matter what you're facing, no matter how dark it is, no matter how gloomy things may be, no matter how much you think you're never going to get through it, don't forget, there will always be a hope revealed. That's right. Woo, love it. <laughs> Thanks again for tuning in to Hope Revealed. For those of you that are listening, you can always find us at podbean.com, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you like to find your favorite podcasts. Make sure you like us, download us, and definitely share us. You can also find us at LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook to watch the video version. I hope today you found a Hope Revealed.